Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1458. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got a great video here. We need to look up PVC pipe prices in multiple tables. And we're going to see how to use the VLOOKUP and indirect functions with defined names to solve this problem. Now, here's our transactional data set. We have the date, number of pipes, the discount, the type of pipe. And notice we have UPVC, PPVC, and CPVC types of pipe. Then we have our size. And we need to look up the price based on the type and size from one to three different tables. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can build a formula to look up from multiple tables. And I have an Excel magic trick, 1316, that looks at how to do it with the if indirect switch, ifs, and choose. Now, this video is awesome. It compares and contrasts each one. But if we do not have a large data set, and we have control down here like 5,000 plus records, and that's not a big Excel table, and we don't have a bunch of other calculations that potentially could slow down calculation time. So I'm actually going to go with the indirect method, which will yield the shortest, smallest formula for looking up from multiple tables. Now, the first thing we want to do is I actually want to use define names to name each one of these tables. And how are we going to do that? I'm going to highlight just the range I want. That's just the lookup table. First column has the item we're going to try to match, which means the size. And the second column has the price. So I highlight that. And I go up to the name box. If you hover your cursor, you could see that screen tip says name box. Click. And we're going to name this table U, P, V, C, and Enter. Now let's do the next table, Highlight. This one will be called P, P, V, C. Click up in the name box, P, P, V, C, Enter. And finally, we have Highlight the range, and this will be C, P, V, C. Click in the name box, C, P, V, C, and Enter. Now we want to test that. I'm going to click over somewhere in the spreadsheet and use my drop down in the name box and select to see if each one of the ranges is correct. I see the CPVC, the UPVC. Now, if there was an error, you'd want to go over to Formulas, Name Manager. And in the Name Manager dialog box, you could select whichever one you want, click Either delete if it's completely wrong, or we can click Edit, and you could change the range. Escape, Escape. Now, if these were going to change often, meaning we changed the number of rows or we decreased the number of rows, I would convert these each to an Excel table. But for our spreadsheet here, these tables are not going to change. Now, guess what? We can use the fact that in the transaction, we have the name of our table. Now, let's just learn a little trick here about defined names. Before I create my formula, I'm going to type an equal sign. And I want to use the keyboard F3. That gives me my paste name dialog box. I'm just going to pick UPVC, double click, and there it is. Now, if I hit the F9 key, I can see that, sure enough, that defined name is showing me the first and second column of our lookup table, Control-Z. So I can use that UPVC defined name in my formula, no problem. But look at this. I'm going to click Escape. If I type equals and click on UPVC, that should work, right? I mean, Excel should recognize that text there as the defined name in our lookup table. If I hit the F9 key, no way. That's text, not a reference to that table. Escape, but no problem. Equals I and D, I, and there's the indirect function. And look at this. All it does is returns the reference specified 
by a text string. That's exactly what we want. Tab. There it is, reference. Boom, I click on that. As a relative cell reference. So as we copy the formula down, indirect will access the proper defined name as we copy it down. Close parentheses, and let's F9 to evaluate. No way. There's our table. Control Z just for kicks. Control Enter. It gives me a value error because that's an entire table. But if I double click and send it down and go to the third transaction, PPVC, when I hit the F2 and then F9 key, now I'm getting this table here. I can see, I can see there's a 1 and then the comma. That means go over a column. 1, go over a column, and there's the 1295. Semicolon means go down to the next row, 2, 1895, 2, 1895, and then all the way down to the bottom, 10 and 95, 95. Escape. Now guess what? F2, I just use that indirect inside of the VLOOKUP function. That indirect is going to be our table. After the equal sign, VL, I see VLOOKUP highlighted in blue. I hit the Tab key. Now, lookup value. Remember, each one of these tables in the first column has size. So my lookup value is going to be right here, size. Now, notice these numbers are actual inches. Over here, there's a special custom number formatting applied. But VLOOKUP will have no problem matching whatever the number is in the first column using approximate match lookup. Now, I'm going to type a comma. There's the table. So I very carefully click at the end, comma. Each one of our tables always has the cost in the second column. Second column. That means this table here, 1, 2. So I'm going to type a 2. I do not need to put range lookup, comma, because the default is approximate match lookup. So if I leave it out, VLOOKUP will assume I want to do approximate match. I'm going to backspace. Anytime you see those square brackets there, it means if you know the default, you don't even have to put it in. Close parentheses. That's a pretty short formula. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And no way. 10 inches for P PVC. There it is, 95, 95. Right here. We have 3 inches, and there's our 35.95. Down here, I have 1 inch. There's the 19.95. Now I'm going to click in the top cell Control down arrow. I just want to F2 to verify that the formula is looking good. And it is, looking at the two relative cell references. Escape Control Home to jump back to cell A1. Now, I do want to show you this is custom number formatting. If I highlight this column, we can clearly see in the active cell that number one can easily be matched with the one here because that's just number formatting. If I use Control-1 to open up Format Cells dialog box, I can see there's the custom number formatting. If you're interested, and this is not necessary, but we could click in the top cell, Control-Shift, down arrow to highlight all the way down to the bottom, Control-Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Control-1 to open up Format Cells, Number Tab, Custom, Highlight General. And I need to show the number, so I'm simply going to put a 0. And then if we want text, we have to put it in double quotes. So double quotes and then single apostrophe, single apostrophe, and double quote. And that's the number formatting. We can see the sample there. The number's still in the cell. That's just the way that it is displayed. Click OK. Not necessary, but it just shows you that visually that we could do the same thing over here. I'm going to Control Z and leave it that way. Now, we do have one last formula. I actually need to calculate total sale for each transaction. We have number of pipes price and our discount. Now, we're going to have to use round because I can clearly see there's some decimals past the penny position. But let's just do our base formula equals, and I'm going to arrow over to get number of pipes times our price 
times. And I cannot just put the discount, because when you're given a 47% discount, that means your actual net cost equivalent is 53%. So we have to very carefully, after the second multiplication symbol, open parentheses 1 minus the discount. Now we close parentheses. And of course, that's the actual amount that's reduced. But if I highlight that little bit and hit F9, you can see that's the actual net cost equivalent. So for every $1, we have to pay 53 pennies. Control-Z. Now that formula will work without rounding. Control-Enter. Double click and send it down. I can already see the extraneous decimals. So I want to round. Notice the active cell at the top. I can hit the F2 key with the whole column highlighted and edit this formula. I very carefully, after the equal sign, want to use the round function. Tab. The number, that's whatever formula we have. And very carefully at the end, comma, number of digits. Well, we're going to count on our fingers to get to the penny. So decimal and then 1, 2. So I have to put a 2 to tell round to round to the penny position. Type a 2, close parentheses. Now the edited formula, I can populate it all the way down by using Control and Enter. And there we have our rounded total sale. Now Control down arrow F2. Just verifying that the relative cell references are working, and they are. Control Home. All right, so if I come back up here in F2, I mentioned earlier this indirect function is actually a volatile function. That means all 5,000 occurrences of the indirect function will recalculate every time you do anything, whether you hit Enter or insert a column, or type something here and hit Enter, Control-Z, any action will cause it to recalculate. That's why if you have a large spreadsheet with lots of other formulas, then you might want to choose the choose or ifs or if function. But there's no doubt that that is elegant and short. What an awesome formula. And for our use, simply 5,000 records, three lookup tables, it's never going to hurt our performance or our calculation time. All right, so a little bit about VLOOKUP and indirect to look up to three different tables to look up PVC pipe prices. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up, comment, and sub. All right, we'll see you next video.